Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the GM K-Tech M8. This is a mid-range mini PC. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's definitely capable. It's got a Ryzen processor inside, a 6650H with six cores and 12 threads, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. As you'll see in this review, it performs quite nicely. It's got a decent array of ports for its price point. So it does have some degree of expandability and utility. So we're going to take a closer look at this thing and see what it's all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from GMK Tech. However, no other compensation was received. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and they have not reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at around $359, at least at the time I'm shooting this video. For the price point, I am very impressed with the port selection on this, namely the Oculink port here, which allows you to connect devices directly to the system bus. We've covered Oculink here on the channel in the past. You can buy these adapters that let you plug in GPUs and pretty much any other PCI Express card right into the port here, and you've got faster than Thunderbolt performance out of those devices, so this is great to have right on the front, especially at this price. Additionally, they've got a 40 gigabit per second USB 4 port here on the front as well. And I did do a test of that port a little bit earlier with an NVMe drive, and I was getting speeds that I would expect to get out of a 40 gigabit per second port. So you've got two very useful ports here on the front for expansion. You can plug GPUs into both of them if you wanted to, or just use Thunderbolt devices here as well. You also have two USB-A ports here running at USB 3 speeds. I believe these are 10 gigabits per second up front. You have your headphone microphone jack here and your power button. On the back, you've got more ports, another USB 3 port, a USB 2 port for your keyboards and mice. Now, as far as displays go, GMK Tech says you can have three 8K displays coming out of this. I don't own an 8K display, but I do have a bunch of 4K displays and everything worked fine out of the HDMI and the display port here. The third port is on the USB 4 port here, which is a full service port, so you could connect up a dongle and get your third display output through there. You'll also notice you have two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports there. I did do a test of those a little bit earlier, got the full speed out of both, so those are performing well, so no issues with that. The Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi 6E, but I was impressed with its performance. As you can see here, we're getting about 650 megabits per second on the downstream and a gigabit plus on the upstream. So very decent performing Wi-Fi, which is something we typically don't see on these little mini PCs. The power goes in here. They give you a 100 watt power adapter in the box, just a big old brick here. Uh, so this will run idle at about 12 watts, and it'll pull up to about 70 watts when it's under load. Now, unlike other GMK Tech mini PCs, the RAM on this one is soldered onto the motherboard. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. You can, though, upgrade the storage and the Wi-Fi card. You just unscrew the rubber feet here, and once you pull the metal sheath off of the system, you then flip it over and then unscrew some stuff on the bottom and that will get you into where the hard drives are located along with that Wi-Fi card. So a little limited on its upgrade ability versus some of the other ones, but you can run two NVMe drives and dual boot Linux and Windows if you'd like to do that sort of thing. Speaking of Windows, it has Windows 11 Pro installed. So why don't we get it hooked up now and see how it performs. All right, why don't we start off with some basics here. We'll do a little web browsing. We'll pull up the Brave browser here, head over to the nasa.gov homepage and we'll scroll around and see how fast everything comes to life here. So it looks as though uh, this system is performing as you would expect a six core system to perform. So even though it's not the newest processor, uh, this is able to keep up with pretty much anything you would throw at it from a web browsing perspective. I also have this running at 4K60, so it is able to keep up and render everything at a high resolution as well. So good stuff here on the basics. A little bit earlier, I threw some 4K 60 frames per second video at it. Had a couple of drop frames, nothing significant here that I would even notice. So I think if you are doing some media playback on the device, it should run just fine for you. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 22.4, which puts it right in line with some of its peers that you can get at around this price point. Now this is not gonna be a video editing powerhouse without an external GPU attached, but for basic edits, even at 4K 60 here, you can drop a transition on and get very good results if you're just stringing clips together. So if you're not doing anything too crazy, 
I think you should be able to get some editing done on this as well. And of course, you have the option to attach a GPU, which will dramatically increase your performance for more advanced video editing tasks. So why don't we move on to gaming? And this is where you'll see a little bit of a struggle with some of the higher end titles like Cyberpunk here. So this is the benchmark from Cyberpunk 2077. I have it running at 1080p at the lowest settings. And I'm pushing about 30 frames per second. It goes up a little bit as you go outdoors into a less complex environment. But still, it's definitely going to struggle a bit with more modern titles, but they're still playable at around 30 frames per second. I did run this again at 720p, and I did have a nice improvement in performance here. We were getting at 720p at the lowest settings, about 45 frames per second, give or take. And then when we went into the outdoor environment, it was pushing close to 60. So 720p is going to be the sweet spot on this one. To some degree, this system is kind of like a little Steam Deck that you plug into a monitor. It's got around the same level of performance. It also did quite well at game emulation. So here we were running a PS2 emulator at the native resolution of the emulator and getting full performance here, 100%, 60 frames per second, and a very good uh, emulation experience. And that would be true of the PS2 all the way back to the systems of the 90s, 80s, and 70s. So for emulation, I think this is a great choice. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,646. This puts it right within the margin of error of the Steam Deck. So very similar performance there and also very similar to some of the other Ryzen processors that were around at the time that this chip was released into the market. So all in, it's not a bad little performer here. Just keep your expectations in check on gaming, and I think you'll have some good experiences with it. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 98.4%. That means the system will not likely thermal throttle all that much when it's placed under heavy load. It does have a fan on board. It is not as noisy as some other mini PC fans that I've encountered, but you will hear it especially if you have the system in its performance mode, which will run the processor at its full 40 watts of capacity. That is what I have it set to for all of these games and tests that we ran. That's where you're gonna hear the fan the most. You can turn it down in the BIOS settings. They have a setting called uh, balance, which will run at 35 watts and the fan won't kick on as much. There's also a quiet mode at 28 watts that won't give you the gaming performance that we just saw, but it will probably be adequate for doing your web browsing and home server tasks. So if it is a little too noisy, you can dial it down. When the fan is running, even at full blast, it is not one of the louder mini PCs that I have tested. But I know a lot of you like a completely silent work environment, and this one in its performance setting will not be quiet. All right, one last thing to check out here, and that is its Linux performance. I booted up the most recent version of Ubuntu here. All of the hardware got detected properly. That includes the video, the Wi-Fi, the audio, the Bluetooth. The Ethernet all work fine, so this was a very nice Linux experience here, and if you were intending on doing a dual boot situation or just running an alternative operating system on it full time, I think it will do well at that. So all in, I think this one is a pretty good value from GMK Tech. You don't get the upgradable RAM, but for a reasonable price, you do get a PC with some very high speed I.O., namely the Oculink port and the 40 gigabit per second USB 4 port that is compatible with Thunderbolt devices. We don't typically see these ports on lower end mini PCs, but in this one, you get it. And of course, the processor on board, while not new, is certainly more than adequate for most tasks. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.